This week I'm testing the 2018 Kia Rio EX. I've been driving this car for a few days now and I wanted to give some first impressions and just kind of thoughts of what it's like behind the wheel. So far I've found it to be a pretty economical, practical, comfortable, nice, subcompact car to live with. Um, no real big complaints. It has a nice deep trunk. A lot of space when you fold the seats down. Decent amount of legroom in the rear. Pretty comfortable back here, set to my driving position at 5 foot 10. It's kind of refreshing to have a car with a key again. It's a rare sight these days. One of the few options and features you do get is a reverse camera. Always welcome these days. Once we get out into some light, I'll show you the interior. This is a nicely appointed car. It has kind of faux leather vinyl seats, this neat interior red trim on the dashboard and on the doors. The steering wheel's leather, feels nice and it's a nice wheel. It feels good in hand. Pretty basic climate control knobs. There's always something that I've liked about small hatchbacks. I think they're a little bit unassuming. You don't have very high expectations for them, and they have a little bit of that rental car vibe. They're the right size, they're lightweight, they're responsive. They're, not, they're, they're never that fast, but you can really ring them out on the street and have some fun with them if you want to. One nice thing this time of day is this Rio does have a good sun visor. It even extends so you can actually block the sun. We've got some storage up here for sunglasses, a couple storage compartments here, auxiliary port for a three and a half millimeter aux cable and a USB. Nice info infotainment from Hyundai and Kia here. Works well, it's responsive, it's quick, easy to use. Relatively small center console. So one of the highlights of this car for me has been, I mean, you buy this car, it's not that expensive. I think this one tops out at around 19, 20,000 or so, including destination. Most of this week, I've actually been trying to save as much gas as possible before this test drive. But uh, earlier on the highway, I did a 40 mile back and forth round trip out to kind of Ann Arbor and back. And I got 46 miles to the gallon in this car. I filled up right here at the gas station down the street and went to the exact same pump, filled up the tank again after 40 miles and I only put 0.8 gallons in. Pretty impressive real, real world fuel economy numbers. Uh, the trip computer was reading around 42 and the real world actually turned out to be a little bit higher at 46. This is a traditional torque converting six speed automatic. It's responsive, it shifts pretty quickly, pretty smoothly, no complaints. 
on the highway there just isn't enough power to hold in six and do that much acceleration so it is going to be downshifting into fifth and fourth if you do need to pass someone if you do want to get better fuel economy though you can put it over into manual mode lock it out in sixth gear which is nice there's a sport mode a sport button basically it just kind of makes the throttle a little bit more excitable quickens up the shifts quite a bit and keeps the revs a little bit higher between three and four thousand rpm most of the time though i don't imagine anyone is really going to be hustling this car around in sport mode it's just fine in normal driving mode and uh, it's pretty comfortable i'm not sure how well it will come through with the audio as well but one thing that I've noticed is that it, for its class, this car is pretty quiet. Uh, there's not a lot of wind noise, not, not, not a lot of NVH or road noise, especially on the highway. You can easily hold a conversation. Uh, really no complaints with NVH on this car. Sometimes it gets a little bit noisy over bumps, uh, but it does have small wheels and small tires. So there is gonna be a little bit more, uh, a little more NVH just because of that, but Overall, the car's been pretty impressive in that respect. There's not a lot of power, but it, it does fine in normal traffic situations. I've never really had any problems where I felt like I've really, really, really needed more. Yeah, it's slow, but it's not as slow as some cars with a CVT. So I'll give you that. It does downshift pretty well, pretty quickly. It's nice and responsive. It gives you a lower gear when you need it, and uh, I do really, really like the brakes. Uh, it's it's not quite over boosted, but it's a pretty highly boosted brake pedal. It gives you. It's not like you're going to press the brakes. They're very easy to modulate. There's a lot of progression, but if you really get into them, they'll really slow the car down quite a bit. And it's nice. It gives you a lot of confidence in the brakes, and it's just nice to use if you're doing a lot of stop and go traffic. Let's try the support button here. Take this corner a little bit of speed. Dynamically, this car basically is just, it reverts to understeer. It's a nice, safe understeer. It's progressive. The steering feel isn't awesome, but um, you can hear what's going on with the front tires just by their squealing. And there is a decent amount of mechanical grip. Uh, we can take these entrance exit ramps at around 55, 60 miles an hour, depending on the speed. here on the highway, not a lot of wind noise. It's pretty quiet in here. You can see there, I just needed a downshift just a little bit to get some acceleration. If you're really, really light on the throttle, you can accelerate just a little bit in sixth, but most of the time, if you're gonna be going up a hill, it'll be downshifting into, into fifth, unless if you haven't locked out into sixth gear with the uh, manual mode shifter. I think for the price point on this car and what you can get these for these days, it's a pretty pretty neat offering. Um, I also remember reading somewhere that this is one of the highest safe has one of the highest safety ratings in the class. I think that's important when you're getting into a smaller car with all these big trucks and SUVs on the road. I've enjoyed driving this this week. I don't really have any major complaints. Um, ergonomically, it's great. It feels nice inside there's plenty of room the seats are comfortable i think um the fuel economy is definitely a big win i wasn't super hyper miling but i was trying to get a decent gas mileage i was probably averaging about 65 miles per hour on the highway and 46 mpg is pretty impressive you don't have to put premium fuel on this either you can just rock regular and uh save some money at the pump too around the city on the readout i've been getting about probably 28 30 32 
Um, pretty impressive gas mileage numbers from this car. Over the last 230 miles, some of it has been really spirited, some of it has been pretty economical. I've averaged 36 mpg on the trip computer. Not really scientific, but it's a good mix. Um, I'd expect, depending on your commute, you could probably beat the EPA estimates pretty easily. A few nice things just that come in with the Hyundai Kia uh, cars, your wipers, when you change uh, any settings, it shows you on the info or the little display here what you've done. Uh, I think that's kind of a neat feature. Also will tell you if you've turned your headlights on uh, as well. Just some nice feedback in addition to uh, what you may have been doing with your hands here that you may not be able to see at night or uh, know where your settings are. Let's park this in some light and I'll show you around. You can legitimately see the truck space. I'm not sure if this guy's going or not here. Black Friday today, and everyone is uh, everyone is out and about. I just destroyed some foam. All right, let's throw down some shade here. Good old fashioned regular handbrake. Like I said, not a huge center console, but you can see how just about how deep it is. A lot of the materials are nice. Um, a lot of these are hard plastics, but there is some different surfacing out here. Uh, this climate control is kind of matte. This is nice material here. It almost looks like it's been plasti dipped or something, that it would be tacky, but it's actually very smooth and uh, feels good to the touch. Again, steering wheel and shift knob are both leather wrapped. That feels nice. Whoa, it's really windy. Apologize in advance for any wind noise. Let's show you another view of the back seats here. Pretty decent legroom. Again, I'm five foot ten. I've got about three inches of headroom above my above me, and uh, pretty comfortable back here. This seat, if I were any taller, um, I'd be a little bit tight, but it's not too bad considering the size of this car. Let's take a look at the trunk really deep trunk opening. There's a ton of space back here. Um, this is really nice. If you fold the seats down, you've got a pretty decent amount of cargo capacity. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. Boy, it's windy. Seats don't quite fold flat. Of course, you do have this lower section. Um, there's not a way to bring this up, is there? Okay. In here, you've got a donut spare tire. This doesn't seem to want to stay too stable. There we go. And of course, it's a hatchback. You can take this out, throw a lot of stuff in the back. There's a, quite a bit of cargo space back there. All right. Well. There's the Kia Rio, hopefully you can hear me. Thanks again for watching, guys. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. We'll also be posting uh, some videos on the Windy Road channel as well. So be sure to go check those out. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.